this time the ionic radius versus the radius of a neutral to its neutral atom, right? And this time sometimes this confuses students a bit. Well, so we're gonna go over it right now. It's not a big deal. Okay, cool. So here we go. Ionic radius, okay. Ionic radius versus parent atom. All right, the parent atom is the original neutral form. So let me put it in brackets right here. The original neutral form, right? So let's do a classic example. Let's do sodium, right? Now we know sodium, right, has what? It has 11 protons, okay? 11 protons, bam, and a nucleus. Its configuration, right, is two, eight, one, okay? Now guys, in order for sodium to achieve a stable octet, we know this already, it's gonna lose its valence electron. Metals like to lose their valence electron to achieve stable octets, right? So instead of being 281, it's gonna turn to what? It's gonna turn to 28, okay? Now what happens is it still has 11 protons, but now it only has two shells here. Bam, okay? It's now a positive ion here. So Na plus this configuration, right, is 2-8, the same configuration as neon, okay? No blue gas configuration. It didn't turn into neon, it's gonna behave like neon, alrighty? So here's the deal, guys. Simple question. 281, 11 electrons, 11 protons, that's a neutral atom, right? It's neutral, yes? Okay, and this guy right here is a positive ion. This is Na and a, I'll put a little zero up there, it's neutral, okay? Now guys, which one of these guys is larger? This guy right here with two shells, or this guy right here with three shells, okay? Now hopefully you said the guy with three shells, right? So, energy levels, right? So here's the deal, folks, to make a note, right? That positive ions, all right? Positive ions like Na+, plus with two shells right here, are smaller than original atom. The original neutral atom, positive ions will always be smaller than the original neutral atom, or positive ions are smaller than their parent atom, and you're done, okay? That's always true, guys. For metals, when they lose the valence electrons, their, their, their ion that they form is gonna be smaller than the parent. So now you're thinking to yourself, right? If positive ions are smaller than the original, you should be making some deductions, right, about negative ions. So let's look at it. Use chlorine. Chlorine has 17 protons in the nucleus, yes? Okay, its configuration is two, eight, seven, yes? Halogen. Now, seven in the valence, in the valence shell, he wants one more electron to get stable octet. He is going to do what? He is going to gain an electron, right, to get a stable octet. Giving away seven electrons is too much energy, too much work. So nonmetals tend to gain. All right. So he's still going to have 17 protons. Remember, this is um, chlorine, right? It's neutral chlorine. Now we're going to make chlorine minus. Yes, CO minus. So this right here is two. This right here is eight, and this right here is also eight people when you form the chloride ion. Now you can write this down, guys, that negative, negative ions, I'm using shorthand, negative ions are larger, okay, than their original, atom, the original parent atom, okay? Why is that? It's gaining one more electron, the electron cloud, think of it as getting a little more puffier, okay? There's one more electron in the cloud, then the negative ion chlorine is larger, and that's a general truth, okay? But for positive ions, right? Positive ions, they're gonna be smaller than their parent, okay? And another thing before I leave, don't mix up, right, the trend in atomic radius versus the trend with ionic radius. They're two different things. In um, ionic radius, 
you're losing and gaining electrons. You with me? And in the atomic radius, you have different atoms and you compare their size. So ionic radius, losing and gaining. Positive ones are smaller than the original. Negative ones are larger than the original. You're good to go. Take care.